just love your clients. Treat every client like you'd treat if your brother was in the room, your Dude, mother. I, I was getting it's booked that, up back in the day, and I wasn't really doing that good at tattoos, but I was getting booked up because I I would speak to them like human beings. I mean, I, I hate saying it, but I don't like too cool for school tattooer that, you know, clients come walking in and they're just, I don't know. Maybe if, that's a little harsh. Shit's about to go down. I'm feeling something in my spirit. Chats and Tats with Aaron Della Vidova. Hello, friends. Welcome back to Chats and Tats with me, your host, Aaron Della Vidova. Man, okay, guys, you gotta you gotta listen to me on this. So um, I think I might be fanboying here a little bit today. The guest I have on my show is uh, somebody I really, really look up to as an artist, as a tattoo artist. Um, I've been tattooing, as some of you might know, for 30 years. And, oh, my God, the amount of great tattooers there are in our community nowadays is, uh, I can't even keep track, thousands of them. When I grew up, there was 10, 10 guys to look up to. Now we got thousands. However, in that giant uh, field of amazing, talented tattoo artists, there's just a, a few of them that really shine forward for various reasons that I'll get into in a little bit. But, um, you know, this man today has a style to his art that I think I have in my art. I don't think I do it as well, to be fair. But I just want to let you guys all know I'm a huge fan of this guy. He's an amazing human being. He's done incredible things in the tattoo arts world. Um, and he's my friend. We've worked together at, at Jeff Gogway's shop. We've hung out. Um, I've never tattooed him, and, and nor he, he me. But I think that's going to change today. We'll get into that later. So please, without further ado, welcome my guest today. Dave Koenig. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate you. Yeah, man. But it's funny that you say that because, like, I've known your work before I even started tattooing. And uh, um, I kind of fanboyed you back. I, I think it was at, like, a, the... It was like a Prescott, Arizona tattoo convention or something. I saw you and I, I, I kind of kind of met you and I was like, oh, hi, and talked to you a little bit. And then uh, and then it wasn't until, I think it was like when I was going, working at Jeff's hmm. and I didn't recognize you, you were tattooing, you were doing like a small tattoo on someone and you were just like, this is not usually the work I do. I'm like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure. And then when I found out it was you, I was like, I fucking feel like an asshole for not recognizing you at the time. But yeah, no, I mean... The honor is mine. So, I mean, dude, yeah. seriously, I've, I've looked up to your work for my whole career. So. That's um, that's crazy for me to hear. On one hand, I love it and thank you. Mm -hmm. on, on the other hand, I, all I can think about is I'm going to die soon because I'm feeling really old. <laughs> the, We're all going to die. <laughs> the fact that when you got into tattooing, you were looking up because I, I mean... I, sh I should say you've been tattooing for 22 years. Wow. I'm pushing 30. So when you got in, I was on my eighth year. And on my eighth year, I was having a little mini explosion in Southern California as the new school kid, you know? Yeah, uh, and that's when, when I started, everybody was like, we, we're, we're all graffiti artists who are yeah, just getting into yeah. this game. And you, you start trying to find other tattooers that do, you know, graffiti style tattoos mm -hmm. and... You know, I, I'd see your work or like, uh, what was it, was it Frank Lee or some of these old mm -hmm. school guys, you know, and it would just be like mind boggling. That's what I wanted. <laughs> but then it's funny because in the long run, you get into, you know, large scale tattoos, which is something that I end up starting to get into more and everything mm -hmm. like that. And so I had a whole new reason to admire your work. So, well, yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you, man. I, well, I, thank I respect, you. appreciate that a lot. It means a lot. Um, you know, a little bit about you before we get into maybe everything else is, you know, you're not just a tattooer, you, you know, you got a family, you're, you're, you're a husband, you've got a child, you're a father. Yeah. I think you said you have your son at six. Yeah. My son, Evan, he's six years old, about to be seven yeah. at the end of February. Uh, uh, he lives and breathes dinosaurs right now. Every time I mean, I'm being roared at first thing in the morning all the way in the evening. It's awesome. So, Yeah. That's then my cool. lovely wife, Christina. So she's originally from South Florida. I somehow hoaxed her into moving out to Omaha. I imagine we'll make it back way to the warm weather eventually. But yes, mm, there's talk of that eventually. Yeah, eventually. We'll see. Yeah. I, we, we wanted to a little earlier and then things get in the way, you know, jobs, careers, everything. But uh, uh, it's it's that's that's the end plan for sure. Not yeah. Florida, dude. It's San Diego. I, I love San Diego. It's beautiful out here, man. I'm just formally Absolutely. inviting you to San Diego if you need that warm weather, okay? Oh, this it. is your spot. 
Um, well, that's cool. You're, you know, you're a family man. I only bring, I bring that up for the two you are, but we'll get into later about the balancing act of, um, completely giving everything to an art form and still having a family, you know, and I've had my struggles. I'm sure you've had your own. Um, but before we get there, I just want to mention that, you know, you, you, the shop you work at is 10th Sanctum yes, sir. in Omaha, Nebraska. Yep. So all you guys out there, of course, we'll have links at the end of the show for all this, um, uh, for people to go check out your stuff, you know? Maybe before we get into the other stuff I really want to talk about, I love um, origin stories uh, okay. for, from, from anybody, but especially tattoo artists, especially, I don't want to use the word old, but guys that have been around a while, maybe. Yeah. The tattoo origin stories today. These days. <laughs> it is. And I don't know if you've got a crazy one. I don't even know your origin story. I mean, mine was 30 years ago, you know, gangsters and fucking yeah. crazy ass shit going on all around me and drug deals and guns and knives. And it was just like, what am I doing here? Um, yeah. but, uh, and I won't get into mine. I'll probably end up telling it a hundred times on every episode, but I'm more interested in yours. You, you, you know, maybe walk me through that. You know, you don't have to go to childbirth, but you're a young man. You're, you may be into art and you take it from there and how that kind of grows to the point where you get into tattooing. And then once you get to that point, I want to hear how you broke into tattooing. So, okay. Well, um, as far as art and drawing, I've been doing it pretty much my whole life. Mm -hmm. uh, I do remember being, I think I was like maybe first grade. I remember seeing my sister did amazing drawing and I drew something and I remember, uh, and my, my mom drew a lot. So we were artistic family, but uh, I remember them being so impressed with my sister's artwork. And I remember my dad going, oh, he needs a little work. And for some reason, I think that worked as my ignition. You know, there was something that ignited that interest in drawing for me. And so because of that, I think I started associating every time I failed with my drawings as like learning lessons. And then it put me into like a state where I was like, I, I started wanting to get better, you know, and I started like every time I fail, I'd be like, OK, figure it out, figure it out. And then eventually I started getting pretty good at it. And then I think, you know, what is it, that 10,000 hours, you know, mm -hmm. I, and then. And then having people notice that and uh, kind of recognize me for it, it kind of worked as an ignition. And then that was when, you know, doing art and drawing kind of made me decide that that was um, kind of like the skill set that I was going to identify myself with. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I always drew and then, you know, time went on and I had points where I didn't want to draw, you know, and I was like, you know, I had other ideas and whatever, but in the end, like, I didn't quite know what I wanted to do. Um, and then I, 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 I really realized one day I was thinking about it and I was like, well, what do I do that loses time without wasting time? Well, drawing, art, I was like, I can sit down and start drawing and hours go by and I don't even realize it. Mm -hmm. So then I realized I was like, that's something productive that I enjoy doing. And because I enjoy doing it, that's what I should probably do for a living. I was kind of like going, okay, well, what kind of job can I get where I'm doing art, you know? And I tried going down the graphic design road. That was a no go. I mean, I was trying to place ads. There was nothing artistic for me about it, but tattooing, I guess I tried tattooing uh, or getting into it when I was about 19, 20 years old. I remember going to a specific shop that in Omaha, because at the time I don't think there were many shops, uh, but I remember going to a shop uh, cause I knew the artists there and I was like, oh, they're good tattooers. Um, but I made the mistake. I brought my girlfriend at the time and they wanted to hire her instead. Yeah. And so I was, was a little... Was she in a, a, wanting to be a tattooer too? No, no, not at all. Yeah, yeah. She had no intention. She was but just she was pretty. Just like, oh, yeah, pretty much. She was like, oh, this is awesome. And yeah, you know, yeah. You know, they were like, get out of here, kid. We'll take your girlfriend. Yeah, exactly. That sounds so, like that era of tattoo artists. Oh, yeah. I mean, needless to say, I was like, okay, well, that that relationship won't, won't stand. So, um... <laughs> I don't know, but I, you know, and then I, then other things came through. Uh, I did get into a little trouble when I was younger. I was a little rowdy. And uh, then I, it was kind of like one of these things where I was on like a diversion program and they were like, we either go to jail, military, or go to school, maintain a good grade point average. And I decided, I was like, well, I'll go to school. So enrolled over at University of Nebraska, Omaha, decided to do fine arts because I thought, well, I can draw really well. Maybe that's what I should do. Uh, I embarked on that and anthropology. I loved anthropology. Something about the ethnography side of anthropology, like the study of cultures and everything, mm -hmm. which in in the end pays off because it helped out with my tattoo career. But uh, yeah, I did the art. And um, I don't know, when I hit a point where it was clear for me, I was just like, 
mm, I, I don't like this anymore. Mm. Got out of it, uh, pursued tattooing again, um, and uh, went to a shop that I knew the artists, uh, and uh, I actually helped them kind of open the shop back in 2000, I think it was in 2001 or 2000. They had me do, they knew me for graffiti and doing artwork like that. I, I can't say I was a graffiti artist, but I used to like drawing in that style. They had me paint a bunch of the doors in the shop. And uh, well, about a year later, they, they, you know, they knew I wanted to apprentice and I got an apprenticeship. You know, and it was a good shop. It was in in Omaha. It was like the thirteenth shop. You know, and mm -hmm. I think now we're up to like a you know, hundred plus or something for a town that size. Yeah, I started apprenticing there, and my mentor there, he had only been tattooing for about four years, so I think we were learning a lot together. You know, I worked at that shop for almost thirteen years, and mm -hmm. uh, um, started building my career. And and uh, I don't know, like I've been tattooing for. 22 almost 22 years in march but i feel like i've only tattooed seriously for maybe a little under a decade you know because mm -hmm. when i started i didn't know as much and it was you're learning and i and i love um just like you said the rowdy times i think i came right at the end of that era of mm -hmm. tattooing because it was like and i love the era that i'm in because it was like i got into tattooing when it was still rough and tumble, you know, like mm -hmm. you had to worry about it. Some shops were still like, you know, biker oriented. You had uh, territory, you know, this, mm -hmm. that. Yeah, I mean, we weren't friends with other shops in town. Everybody was kind of nobody was each other. back then. Yeah. yeah, I mean, which is different now. Nowadays, well, yeah. it's like I'm buddies with everybody, you know, um, which is great. But um, but then I was also getting into tattooing in an age where you know, artists were coming in and learning how to tattoo, you know, graffiti artists, you know, people that knew art, you know, and it was cool to see that evolution. Um, the only thing that sucks about it is it does kind of, man, I did a lot of bad tattoos in the beginning, you know what I'm saying? Cause you're like going, Oh, I want to do this new school stuff. I'll have a light source coming this way, a light source coming this way, you know, this, that. And then you see the tattoo five years later and it just aged like hell. You're just like, ah, you know, it's like, oh, there's a reason that, you know, traditional tattoos are this way or Japanese tattoos yeah. are done this way. And, you know, so you learn. So it was kind of cool to see, like, you know, start off, you know, you got to make your needles. You got to do this. You deal with the rough and tumble. And I think my first tattoo convention was in 2001 and it was the first New York tattoo convention, you know, and and, and it was cool. I mean, uh, and I remember my first tattoo machine. I mean, I was. I was running some like aluminum, you know, little machines that were just, bah! you know, super right. loud in the beginning. But when I had to get a proper machine, I remember I had to call uh, uh, Mike Malone and mm. it was just like, I'm calling Rollo. And, <laughs> and I had the connection through a buddy of mine. And I remember talking to him on the phone and it was just like, he was just like, uh, what did he say to me? He's like, so you, what do you, you want a tattoo machine? I was like, yeah, I'm, looking for like a shader i want uh, mm -hmm. you know i like those bulldogs and he's just like so what you're telling me is you're gonna be like the golfer who can't golf but you got the best fucking clubs and i was just like <laughs> oh fuck. I, was like, I, I was just like yeah yeah that's, yeah that's exactly what i'm gonna be and uh yeah but he I, still I, sold you the machine well he just goes he's like all right you little fuck i'll, I'll make you a machine click hung up on me and i was just like but he doesn't even know my address or anything. Like, what do we? And my buddy is just like, "Don't worry about it. We got you." You know, he's just like, "All right." Yeah. And then I think I, I bet it was like three, four weeks later, I got it in the mail, and you know, I still have that machine. I That's still have great. it. I've had it rebuilt once by my buddy Kevin Chasick out at uh, Iron Brush Tattoo out in Lincoln, and he did a wonderful job. I, you know, it's like, I don't really run it as much anymore, just because now it's like, you know, I'm running the cartridges and everything like right. that. So, but. I like how you say that with a little bit of sadness. There is. Uh, <laughs> I'm I mean, running the cartridges. I mean, besides like, like, yeah, it's like you, like, I, I almost have all my, my coil machines, but your, your, the rotary machines for some reason don't seem as like uh, crap. There's not the craftsmanship. Mm -hmm. So I generally tend to sell those really easy. Unless it's like, uh, unless I used to run those Dan Cuban signed winders a lot. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's something about those ones I've gotten from him that I hold on to just because it's like, well, at least I've hold on to a couple of them because I'm like, there's a cool craftsmanship about it, you know? And they perform. 
Oh my god, they're I like mean, jackhammers, man. Those yeah, things, man. They, they do it. That's a good story, man. And, and you know, some of the things you said in there, I can totally relate to. One of my favorite parts about my tattoo journey is some of the things you mentioned, which is having been on board for the whole ride, like being a part of the rough and tumble era. Yeah. Which during it, I detested it. I was just half the time scared for my life and angry that uh, we wouldn't be just left alone to be artists. And why does it have to be about drug deals and guns and, and, and you know, the neighboring shop that is, is going to come by one night and beat everybody, all the drama, yeah. you know, which occupied so much of my stress and anxiety in those years. So I really was really quite angry about it for a lot of years. But now it's all gone, and I look back on it with just such, you know, I just smile. A part of you kind of misses. You're like, I miss that edge, but then I'm happy it's well, gone. Well, I don't know if I miss it, but I'm glad to have been a part of it because really what we're talking about is the story of tattooing. Obviously, things evolve, and it'll always be evolving. Mm. But I just think that that chapter from, you know, whatever you want to call it in the 50s to where we are today that's a very unique part of our history that will never happen yeah. again. And and I got to not just read it in a book, but I mean, I was right there with the characters that were involved. And uh, I really appreciate that. And you got a bit of that too. We both got a bit of that. I that's got a cool. little bit of it. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it's great. I mean, it's great to see the potential of where tattooing has become. You know, it's like seeing some of the stuff people are putting out. It's just like mind blowing, you know, um, and to see like, kind of how technology and everything like that has influenced tattooing and changed it so much. But I can still build a coil machine. I can't say it will work, but I know what, how to do it. <laughs> I could too. I built my, I built machines with Juan Puente. Shout out to Juan Puente. One of my mentors is a young tattooer made thousands of needles. Oh my right. God. You probably did too. Yeah. Get in early and try to make some needles. But then we got, you know, I had to do it in the very beginning, a little jig and do all that yeah. stuff. But then uh, I think it was only about six months in that we switched to just buying groupings and then you just have to solder them on and, and do all that. Mm. So like, I didn't have to do it for too long at all. So we did, man. I still worry about all the flux I inhaled. Oh yeah. I mean, I don't know. That was probably not good. <laughs> or, uh, have you ever dropped one of those? I remember one time I dropped one of those needles and I moved and I rubbed or something and I was like, where the fuck that needle go? I'm like looking, I'm looking, and then I look at my hand, and I got a little silver right here in the meat of my hand, and I was like, I pull it out, and I'm like, oh my God, that thing just sunk right into my hand. I didn't know, but they were so sharp and so tiny, you know? Oh, man. Yeah, those days are done. You know, I've yeah. apprenticed a few people. Nobody says it anymore, but, you know, I've had some people come to me, like, are you teaching them how to make needles? Are you teaching them how to build machines? And, and I'll just say it right here on the show. No, I didn't. And I, I don't know, if you're mad at me for that, I'm sorry, but I didn't see the necessity. I, I think yeah. times have changed and, and I'm a big fan of, of the cartridge system just from the safety standpoint. I yeah. know that we can have autoclaves. I know it can be done safely without it, but I just feel like it puts the customer so much more at ease to be able to look at them and tell them every single thing I'm touching you with today is going into a trash can when I'm done. Yeah. It's yeah. brand new, out of a box. It's just, it, it, it's too easy, you it's know? And, easy. and uh, you know, it, it's, when it first, when it when the cartridges, when I was first introduced to them, um, yeah, I, I, I think it was over at Franklin Autra's shop out in uh, uh, Dania Beach or out in South Florida. But I remember he's like, oh, you got to try these and this and that. And I gave him a try, but I remember I was like trying to hook them up to my coil machines and the coil machines just turning, you know, getting hot. And I'm like, no, these are no, I don't like these. But as time's progressed, it's just like I'm going, oh, yeah, this is great. I don't have to set up five machines for every yeah. tattoo. I can literally set up one or two machines and then just switch it out, you yeah. know. But I mean, like I was I held on to the coils as long as I could because I was like, no, I'm, you know. I won't go as far as saying loyal to the coil, but I was just like, I felt like real tattooers, coil, coil, coil. And then, uh, well, then uh, I remember then I got introduced to like a few rotary machines that, you know, for shading. And I was like, oh, fuck's sake, these are good. You know, I mean, <laughs> this makes packing in so much easier. And yeah. so then uh, I was like, all right, I won't, I won't line with a rotary. <laughs> and then, of course, then I got introduced to, I remember a guy, uh, a biker guy who tattooed a shop another shop in Omaha, he brought over a Dan Cuban version one and I didn't, he didn't even know who made it. And I remember he, I was, I, he was selling them and he's like, try this out and whatever. And one of the other people in our shop bought it. 
and and he they, he even said he threw it against a a, a, a a cement wall and and I ran it and he was saying it was a shader I was like no nah, this thing's a power liner <laughs> and I remember the next day I outlined like a whole you know chess piece eagle and and uh it, you know in a couple hours it was like, you know I was like fuck now I got a liner that's a that's yeah. a uh, rotary and even though you know those Cubans they don't feel quite you know and, and they got character like coils but. I, uh, then I was all rotary and then I told myself, well, I'll never, I'll never tattoo with one of those ones. that look like a dildo, you know, <laughs> now I'm sitting here with you know, cordless, you know, one, like, but I'd like to look cool. I'd like to look like one of those old school tattooers and well, with, you know, that, my with that mustache. Machine. Yeah. You, like you can't have a, yeah, a, a you know, a Keep wizard, a, and... although I call them wizard sticks. So uh, yeah. yeah, it kind of fits. You kind of look like a wizard with one of them in your hand. Thanks man. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, no. you held on. You 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 held on much longer. I'm the opposite of you. I'm I did the opposite. As soon as they came out, I was like, I'm all about that now. <laughs> yeah. Well, I held on, and you know, and now being cordless, it's like, oh my that's God. a game. That's this a is, game over. Yeah, game changer. I mean, be able to come travel here with you know all my gear in one little suitcase. You know, mm. I remember my first conventions. It was like an O four. I remember being like, you know, big case full of everything, and you know, how are we gonna get this there and this and that? And now it's like. Yeah, it's it's too easy. You it's know. too easy. You got to use whatever tool it is and put the best tattoo in the skin. You that's know? what it comes I, down I, to. That's all it is. So, and getting it done as as efficiently as a, as possible. Efficiency being the key word there, just because our particular job is uh, it involves somebody laying on a table in pain. So if it's gonna take, if it's gonna make it quicker, oh, get yeah. it over with faster. It's gonna save them money and pain. It's kind of your responsibility. To, to kind of adopt whatever is going on that makes that happen. Well, I mean, that's, it's like the damn, uh, the, 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 um, uh, the, what is it? The pussy juice, the, the, the ointments that help take the pain away. Oh, right, yeah. Right, you know, right. in the beginning I was like, you fucking earn your tattoo, you know, but nowadays I'm going, uh, you know, I have a lot of people that travel in and they spend good money travel in out to the Midwest, you know, from everywhere. And, you know, they're going to be spending a day or two with me. I'm like, now it's like those those uh, pain relieving ointments are my best friend. You know, it means they're going to sit better. They're going to get we're going to get it done. You know, it's like, OK, I've got to use whatever tool is going to make this the most painless and most efficient and be able to pump this tattoo out in ample time. Well, it's, and it's, my it, opinions have definitely changed over the last decade or two. And it's their journey, not yours. That's true. Yeah, that's the whole yeah. thing. It's like. Well, who am I to tell this person how to get through this process? Some people, they want that pain. They want to be able to tell their friends they got their whole chest piece done with no um, numbing cream. Yeah. Then let's sit down and do it, buddy. Yeah. I'm, you want to go through this experience together? I'm here for you. Another guy doesn't want to. That, you know, I just find it kind of almost disrespectful to insert yourself into their process. We're a service. We're of service. I'm just here to help you. If you don't do something that disrupts, you know, if you're going to do something disruptive, I'm not going to support it. But if it doesn't disrupt the process, I'm game. What's yeah. going to make you happy, buddy? Like, yeah. uh, however you want to do this, I'm. let's do it. You know, so I think it's just acknowledging that and knowing that I'm here for you, the, the client. It's not about my, me and what I think it should be about. It's about what you, you want it yeah. to be about, you know? It's it's their journey. Yeah. I mean, I mean essentially, they're paying for it and they're... Not just paying through it through you know uh, uh, money, but uh, you know through pain. You know mm. they're gonna wear it the rest of their life. You know yeah. it's like, I mean that's the biggest honor. They they want to wear you know something that I I drew or or and and can tattoo on them for the rest of their life. It's mm. just like sometimes you know I have to remind myself that when I have those um, high maintenance clients or just a giant pain in my ass. Or, you know, or, you know, will you change this, change this, change this? And then in the end, they're like, I like the very first one, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes, you know, it's like, God, it's frustrating, but I have to remember, it's like, you know, in the end, this is an honor. They want to wear my artwork on them and take it to the grave, you know? So it's like, yeah, yeah I have to respect that. You do. You know? so, yeah. And that yeah. kind of, that kind of leads me to like one of my favorite parts about my career thus far after 30 years, looking back on it all. And it's funny to me that. I always thought looking back on my career, the thing that I would be most proud of would be my portfolio. Mm -hmm. And I am proud of my portfolio. And my portfolio is still growing and I'm not done. But really what I look back on the most is the relationships I, I got with all these people. 
going through, you know, getting a little tattoo this big, that's one thing. I don't maybe remember all those people. But you, me, large format tattoos, 100-hour projects, 150-hour projects. I mean, I would like you to speak to that. I've already, you know, done it a lot on the show. But talk about that, like this bond that's created between the artist and the collector on these larger projects. What do you think about that? It's definitely changed the more professional I think I've gotten. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can... You know, say professional for me, but uh, <laughs> no, in, in the sense, of, it's like, yeah, you you create a relationship with these people. I mean, um, I don't know if I can talk about your other podcast, but there was one of them that you were talking about this, and you were talking about like, um, um, you know, the journey of the client, and and sometimes in the beginning, you know, you get these clients. Like, I've got a few clients that, like, in the beginning, they were micromanaging every little thing about their tattoo this big or whatever. I don't, I, I think I'm by nature, I'm, I'm generally like to say I'm a nice guy. So it's like, I'll bend over backwards. I'll make it work out. But the thing is, is like a good majority of why I'm booked out like I am. And I'm fortunate like that is because, you know, I've been nice and I've tolerated and worked with people. And then what happens is when you, you make it a good experience for them, then, you know, a lot of those people come back and they're just like, yeah, do whatever you want. You know, yeah. here's my whole back and this and that. And you're just like, wow, I kind of opened them up to this world, you know, and it, it's like, it's awesome. So when I decided I wanted to do some more large scale tattoos and embark in that journey, it was like, you know, how I started was, you know, offering cheap, you know, coming up with some designs, offering them cheap and then meeting with people and, and talking to them. And then, you know, like my good buddy, Jeff Kalaski, I did a giant like ship on his back and, and it goes from his ankles all the way up to his neck and, yeah, he's become one of my best friends. You know, we, we go hang out, we go work out together. You know, it's yeah. just like, yeah. So I've got a lot of clients like that, that I've, I've become really good friends with. And, you know, some of them, it's almost kind of, you know, I, my buddy, Chris Novak, I put a giant snake on his whole back. I pretty much given him a bodysuit. We went and moved on the front and everything. And I feel bad. I haven't seen that dude in months, but yeah, which I got to hit him up and go grab a beer or, or, or a cup of coffee. And, you know, but, uh, yeah, you just get so close to these people. Mm-hmm. And then you kind of feel like when you're done with it, you're, you're like, wow, I fucking miss these guys, you know, yeah. or miss these girls, you know, it's, it's, uh, I don't know. I love it. It, 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 it is cool. It's a journey. And, uh, what is it? Uh, watching, uh, um, I think one of the things that really kind of pushed me seeing your work and then seeing like Jeff Gogway and then being able to work with him and talk to him a little bit about some of these big projects and he has that thing you know what about submitting and how people just kind of you know they they're allowing you to transform their physical existence you know and it's Mm -hmm. just like how big of an honor it is and yeah it's cool i don't know yeah no that you nailed it It, how big of an honor it is and how some people forget about that right they get caught up in um well i wouldn't say they get caught up they just forget yeah. It's easy to forget on your thousandth tattoo. That's that same honor is still present. Mm. And are you honoring it? You know, and, yeah. and that's something I I don't think I've forgotten it. And I preach it to the people that I work with. That's probably the most important part. And you know, success in the tattoo industry is so easy. I got all these young tattooers, they're you know, this big bad tattoo world out there, and I hope I can make it. And I tell them all the same thing. I'm gonna tell you right now how easy this is. First, you need talent. If you don't have talent, good luck. But if you got talent, not even the best, just decent enough, you know. You just got to have that drive. You got to have the drive and the talent. And then the third component is just love your clients. Treat every client like you treat if your brother was in the room, your Dude, mother. I, I was getting it's booked that. up back in the day, and I wasn't really doing that good at tattoos. But I was getting booked up because I I would speak to them like human beings. I mean, I, I hate saying it, but I don't like the fucking too cool for school fucking tattooer that, you know, clients come walking in and they're just, you know, it's like, you ain't that cool, dog. You draw pictures, you right. know, fucking talk to them like a human being and they're going to come get tattooed by you. You yeah. know, I don't know. Maybe if, that's a little harsh. But. Well, no, you nailed it. We've all seen it. You do that one time. You give someone a good tattoo and you treat them that way. The loyalty of this craft from our clientele is unlike any loyalty of any industry I've ever seen. Like, that's it. You're their guy, period, oh, over yeah. with. I mean, yes, there are collectors that bounce between these big name tattooers because that's another you know species of, but most of them are just like you're their guy. That's okay. it. Well, and then you ever get those ones that uh, you do these big pieces on, but then when they're like, 
I really like so and so's work. Can, can they want I get permission. a tattoo from them? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, I know. Fucking go get a tattoo from them. They're yeah. amazing tattooers. You should have it. You know, it's yeah. like it's your body, it's your life. You know, have at it. I'm just grateful you gave me the real estate that you did. You know. On that note, I can't believe you finished uh, Glenn's bodysuit. His feet. You didn't. <laughs> That's. <laughs> Uh, actually Glenn. everyone tomorrow i, I have glenn guy. on the show i did a bodysuit on glenn and you had the audacity to do his feet <laughs> i told him and then i think i i think i added a little bit to a flower or something on on his arm up above and i was but he I, did. I, I took a video and i was like i'm gonna send it to aaron and jeff and be like hey guys i'm glad i got to do this uh collaboration you know three-way uh bodysuit with you guys you know even though i just did the feet and a flower but no it, it, it's an honor it, it's an honor to have glenn like ask me to do those and then come out to me and 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 it's it's a fucking honor to have me like being you know kind of categorized in you know such elite tattooers like yourself and jeff and i was just like dude that's an honor it makes me nervous as all fuck but i'll do it you know and and uh, yeah it was great and glenn's great man that guy is like yeah that guy is um an inspiration in itself (laughs) yeah i mean that dude is climbing mountains out in everest or whatever i'm just like dude that dude is a machine man he's awesome he's a good dude but yeah you're right for him it was i think a little bit that way hey uh I'm thinking about having Jeff do the lower parts of the arms. And and you could tell you looking at me like, what's he going to do? And of course, like you, I'm like, absolutely. Are you kidding me? Jeff Gogway's piece bumping up against mine. Dave Koenig's on the feet coming in. Dude, I, 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 I love the video. I did the video of like the feet. I'm like, hey, look, there's my tattoo. And then I span out and I see your awesome leg tattoos and everything <laughs> on her. So many people hit me up like, did you do the top part? I was like, hell no. You know, read the comments. I said, Aaron did it. You know, I'm like, go to him. They're like, oh my God. You know, but yeah, I was just like, I had to show it off. I'm like, I, I get to bump up next to Aaron. <laughs> you know, I, I feel like we have a lot of commonalities in our work. Your use of the Nouveau. Uh, I love our Nouveau. Does, our Nouveau yeah. stuff you, you manipulate and put into your work. Yeah. The Fibonacci spiral, mm-hmm. you know, the, that, that whole thing's its own subject. How this certain shape of spiral shows up in everywhere in the universe it fascinates the shit out of me like you look and i don't know how many of you guys have studied this but you look at like a milky way galaxy mm-hmm. it moves just like same. a flower opens plants the, everything everything and and that and that and it's and that's why we love it people don't even know why they love it they they just look at the filigree on a dollar bill and they're like that's cool we don't you see it on the arch of a of a building in italy oh, or yeah. you know it's every when you start noticing filigree in general filigree you will find it everywhere and then you'll start finding it where it was in nature you'll see it yeah. in cigarette smoke in a still room you'll it's see just, there's something beautiful about it the way it flows the way it moves it's the fabric of the universe in my mm-hmm. opinion it's somehow embedded into the fabric of the universe yeah. it's one of the reasons i love it but it's also one of the reasons i made a point and then you get it i made a point to put it in my work but then you get into the body body art i mean flat canvas is one thing mm-hmm. getting art to move around a cylinder and look appropriate up a, a body. Now the Japanese had a had their finger on this already with mm-hmm. wind and water. I mean, you look at great f- finger waves, you'll see that same sequence happening. Oh, yeah. It just keeps showing up. And then and then I think our era brought filigree wasn't a big component in tattooing, but as people that weren't doing Japanese tattooing, that's the wall I hit. I was like, great, I have to compose a piece from ankle to neck. But I need that flow factor. Yeah. And I don't want to use finger waves because it's not a Japanese tattoo. What do I use? What do I use? And then for me, it was like this filigree stuff kind of looks dope. It's the connecting stuff between the subject matter. Yeah. Um, and I do that a lot. And you do that a lot. I, I wanted to just note that we both share and that Jeff does that a lot. I mean, hell, at this point, a lot of people do. Yeah. But uh, it's beautiful. And I just think it's, it's, it's important to note how well it works in tattooing. I think... Uh... What happened, the reason I got kind of caught on to it, like I always loved Art Nouveau. I always, there was something that I was attracted me to Art Nouveau. Um, what do you call the spiral again? The Fibonacci uh, spiral. Fibonacci spiral. The golden so, mean. How I always, how I always kind of related was, uh, I remember, what was it, uh, reading about Leonardo da Vinci saying the most uh, uh, appealing shape to the eye is the shape of an ear. It's that spiral. Mm. So I was like, Oh, if I just incorporate a bunch of those with a big one, it all works out. And then, I, of course, I was attracted to the compositions, especially of like Art Nouveau and Art Deco. Um, 
and a lot of the Art Nouveau and the, uh, however you say, Alphonse Mucha or Alphonse Mucha, Mucha. Uh, the, the, a lot of his commercial work, uh, more so than his paintings, is so translates to tattoos so well. Yeah. And you know, an outline with color. Oh yeah, you know, and and I, when I when I started seeing that, it was pretty cool. I was always attracted to it, but the actual like filigree and scroll work, it didn't hit me till later because I remember I was tattooing, uh, guest spotting at Iron Brush Tattoos, and my buddy Tyson Schaffer, amazing tattooer, he, uh, I was doing some, I think I was doing lettering on a guy's back or something. Well, in the lettering, I I apparently drew it wrong, like where I was waiting out the letters and stuff like that. And in his nicest form of, of letting me know, he's like, hey, have you ever seen a dollar bill? And I was like, like the lettering on a dollar bill. And I was like, yeah, what about it? He's like, if you ever need to know where the letters wait, always re- you know, reference a dollar bill because mm-hmm. you'll see where everything and, and, and you know, like – like on an N, if you're doing like a tattoo style letter mm. of an N, you don't put the weight on the, you know, the what is it, the verticals, you put it on the middle, you know, or it's, and so the more I started looking at the the currency, then I started really appreciating all the art. And then I appreciated all that scroll work. And then mm. I started collecting like old US notes and finding a whole these different ways. And then I, I was like, you know, I'm going to start incorporating in a lot of my paintings, I'm going to make it where it's like something very powerful in the center and easy for the eye to, to recognize. And then I'm going to show off on the outside and do all this mm-hmm. scroll work and filigree and, and make it and then hide things in it, you know, cause I was like, like a that. dollar bill. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, just, you look at a dollar bill, there's the Capitol building or, you know, president Jackson, the mystery in it. Too. And then the scroll work surround. Yeah. I mean, it's very similar so in my paintings. I've done that. And it's great because I still have people who hit me up that have bought like print or paintings for me and they're just like they're like dude i've had this thing for 10 years and i just noticed this and the border and that mm-hmm. and that and, you know and that's what i want and i like i like creating little stories in my head that i can translate in the exterior stuff and and it gives me the freedom to get like super detailed and have fun with the painting i mean i wouldn't do that as a tattoo i mean it's got to age well but you know it's like yeah and that scroll or or filigree i, th- I think filigree is the smaller version of scroll work i had uh I had Russ Abbott uh, correct me on it once at a convention. He's another one that really oh, he does. leans this way. Yeah. But he was like, he was like, it's scroll work, Dave. And I was just, like, I didn't, I don't know I the like, difference. I'll have to call him he's up. like, you got that from Jeff's video. And I was like, at the time I hadn't even watched Jeff's video. I was just like, I, I, yeah, I'm, you know, okay, scroll work. <laughs> but then I was my my booth was backed up to his. And so then, uh, I was purposely calling it filigree just to kind of <laughs> <with> agitate. <laughs> I'd be like, Oh, you want some filigree? And you just see Russ's head peek back behind the curtain. And just, <laughs> uh, I was just like, ah, but no, yeah, his work. Phenomenal. Phenomenal with that. You know, I guess the more I'm thinking about it, filigree would probably be the more leafy, um, plant like yeah i think it's more like the single line and the plant, you know, coming right. up and then scroll work supposed to be thicker, but I, I I wasn't classically trained or anything, and you know, and I love the um, all the engravers that do it. And yeah. I'm sure they've got like proper ways, you know. And I'm sure else. I know Russ well, and if he said that's how it is, it, I'm sure it is. Oh yeah, he's yeah. that guy's an intellectual man. Oh, yeah, he's doing yeah. the he's reading the books. Yeah. I'm like you, I I don't do it that way. I just kind of look at stuff, and I'm like, that looks cool. You know, that's about as simple as my little monkey mind goes, yeah, you know. I'm going to do that. That looks cool. That All looks right, cool. I'll learn about it later. <laughs> or I'll wait for somebody like Russ to correct me. <laughs> Thank you, Russ. Um, no, I, I just wanted to highlight that. I think it's one of the... And you know, the one... It, what fascinates me, too, about your your art is you find a way to have that... See, I call it a sequence or recipe. The Whatever that, the Fibonacci spiral, mm. it actually isn't just in your scroll work. It shows up in like a female figure. Yeah, and the way their body is positioned. The face. Like I love it. Yeah. I mean, I, that. Just repeat it. it, it yeah, I mean, I mean, you first started doing it, I, that shook me. I was like, Thank you. huh. And then that got me thinking about, well, actually, when you look at the human body, a real human body, not a, a characterized version of one, it's there. It's everywhere. It's yeah. every, it's in the face. It's in the position of noses, the lips placed, the ear you mentioned. Yeah. But the way the muscle here goes across and, and connects to the shoulder muscle, that's a, a, that's from here to here is. So then you get to this point where you, we're tattooers, we're decorating human bodies. And then I reach this place where I'm like, this is the most obvious thing ever to put on a human body. It was built to be on yeah. the body kind of a thing. 
even if I'm, and, and the majority of the tattoos I do nowadays are all predominantly large tattoos. And, and the thing about it is like, I literally will, will grit, grit it in the law of thirds and then draw my spirals where I want them on the body or the shape of the arms or the person, you know, if a person's more muscular or if they got shorter arms or whatever, I just find those spots where the curve mm -hmm. is nice. Then I create my composition off those curves. Mm -hmm. And then, and then from there, then I, it's pretty much just making more curves inside you know because then it becomes you know you, you want it so your eye is constantly circulating and and it, it just it, it, it it's nice to look at and then i and then i like to put i like to complement things as much as humanly possible so if i got those curves then i like to have something shooting through you know or mm -hmm. angling through so yeah. it kind of breaks it up yeah. and makes it interesting and if i can i'll repeat that angle and then you know and then you know and then i'll work with like if, if it's uh if it's more of a feminine or whatever, then I'll have a lot more curve curvature. But if it's something I want more masculine and rough, then I've got a lot more angles that I put into it. And then I like to play with it where it's like, you know, maybe I'll do a make a woman and then have real masculine angles into it. Or I used to draw a lot of those like devils and they, they were real kind of, kind of muscular, but then there was something very flowy about them. Mm. And, and, you know, I just like, complimenting finding that yeah. and it, it makes it more interesting for me and i think it just plays with that duality that all our minds yep. have you know the you, yang and yang or your whatever. your process when you said that is is the same as mine like if you if I, what i do now if i want to do a back piece for instance I, I tell the guy send me a picture of your back so i get that photo and i do the same thing i find that movement i'm like okay on this body i'm gonna go from hip through to that rib cage because his rib cage kind of juts out right there. Mm -hmm. So here's my first S curve. Now I need to complicate this. So I'm going to go that same, but then I'm going to cut through it and reach to his right shoulder. So it's just shapes in the beginning. Oh. I know that I've got a, a mermaid that has to go in there or a ship or whatever. That's secondary. Yeah. First, I'm finding the movements, movements. And once I get a kind of a, a rough sketch of all the way these movements, these filigree or these scroll work movements look on the body, then I drag in a ship. And where would that ship be best? Really tiny up in the corner, out in the distance, or real big in front, going down onto his right mm -hmm. butt cheek? And the, so it sounds like we have a, a very similar very process similar. in yeah. layout. Yeah. And I think that's why I'm drawn so much to like, you know, uh, tattooing like images of like snakes, you know, even dragons. I don't get asked to do as many uh, uh, Japanese style dragons. Um, but I love them, you know, um, but I like that because you, you always got continuous flow yep. and then on top of it, you know, uh, you got patterns, which I love incorporating patterns. I like having, you know, very erratic patterns next to something that's very flat and very, you know, mm -hmm. easy to read, you know, cause the one thing I've always noticed, yeah, is like, you have to have it where you have to have something to complement it. That's very easy for the eye to read. Yeah. And then the flow, you know, which I mean, with your stuff, you you'll I, I've noticed a lot of your stuff. You'll have you'll have so much going on in the flow, but then you'll have a big halo or a big chunk that is just like open and it's just one or two colors blended. And it just makes it so easy for the eye to read and and follow along with everything. So not that it's the right way. There's total exceptions to this rule. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's guys doing these you know, square boxes and diamonds shooting off of it, and somehow they find a way to make that work. It's never going to be my wheelhouse at yeah, this the point. The sacred geometry stuff? Yeah, yeah. Like, oh. I, I hate doing it, oh, but yeah. I love looking at it, and yeah. I love seeing people that can do it, and it's just like I have so much respect for them, you know. Man, I... <laughs> when I see them working on those projects, I just, my heart goes out to them kind of, it's just, it's just, it's, it's not easy. I've watched, they, they, we have them that work here and either on their ninth stencil, you know, kind of days where I'm like, it's been five hours, man. You weren't even ready. Clean that first stencil <laughs> off and you're just, well, and just doing it. But then I think once they're actually doing it, you get, uh, you know, I think maybe they got more of that analytical side of their mind where it's like, they find that they are in some sort of meditative state when they're just following the lines and able to be so precise, you know, mm -hmm. not me, you know, if you see my yeah. stencils, I've had so many tattooers. They're like, dude, I saw your stencil on that. And that is a fucking nightmare. And I was just like, <laughs> yeah, that's just how I do it, man. That's why I created such a loose style. Maybe I can hide all my mistakes or something. I don't know. <laughs> No, I mean, half the reason I stuck with my style is it, it's a lot easier to work with. You know, yeah. when you're doing organic shapes and these things, you can, you know, oh, we're a little on the elbow. I'll just raise it an inch. You exactly. can't just you can't just raise 
a, uh, a sacred geometry piece an inch on the top and leave the bottom. It's completely, the truth, it's man. completely fucked at that point. And that's and that's beautiful. Again, mad respect for the guys that are doing it. It does look amazing on the human body when it's done correctly. Oh, I love it. But I mean, I just don't. I wouldn't have the patience for it. You know. It's sort of like MMA. I was talking about this the other day with Chris Lieben on the show. You know, you that have, was a great show. I you, watched you that checked one. that one out. I have so much more respect for that guy. Like I, I didn't really follow his career much, but uh, he was. Uh, um, uh, he, he seemed like a live wire back in the day. I remember seeing oh, him yeah. on the TV show, and then, and then to see him on here and uh, uh, and to hear his story and everything, it yeah. was like yeah, I got a lot of respect for that. Did you guy. get to the end? About yeah. oh yeah. So many. I had a few people write me. They were like. It's just such a sad episode. And I'm like, did you get to the end? Because <laughs> it really, sad. It it's comes not, back. It, yeah. yeah, it comes back. I mean, to, to see everything that he does on, uh, in a moral aspect on how he helps people and stuff like that yeah. now is awesome. So, yeah. Amazing Good guy. Old, much respect to him. Being in the room with that guy, um, I'm really whining about a lot less shit than I was oh, yeah. before. <laughs> yeah, his story, I was like, man, his, his grow, uh, or his, uh, origin story and everything like that i'm like man that motherfucker's seen some shit yeah you know, been but, through the ringer yeah. he went full through it all and, and came out the other side but um but yeah just just talking about mma you know his analogy was the hockey stick it's like when you talk about jujitsu specifically you know it's this art form that mm -hmm. it starts here and it in and mma and, and it's just on this rocket ship this way i look at tattooing it, it not only does it mirror that it mirrors it year by year like our craft basically when i got in it was just not doing a it was growing a little but it was kind of the same stuff from the 50s and 40s nobody yeah. in america really had a handle on it everyone just winging it some people did i don't want to say that a blanket statement because someone out there is going to be like oh yeah what about so and so yeah I get it. I'm talking of general, you know, generalizing here. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you know, in the nineties, it starts ticking up and ticking up and ticking up. And now it is doing, it's just going, it has not stopped and everything. I wonder when the, that, well, not, I don't think it'll go, I don't think it'll go flat, but I definitely think like a rocket There's going to be a curve. It curves and well. starts doing that. And I'll, I mean, I'll predict, I think we're entering the curve right now. Yeah. And not, not to say that we're not capable of, of, shooting forever i'm not dismissing the talent of whoever's going to be tattooing in 10 years but i do think we're reaching that point where we really the world not just the united states the world of of people doing this craft have really we've all got the best tools now we've all got the best ipads we've all got the best i'll get into i want to kind of get into ai here in a sec because uh, that i think there's a component coming that it's going to fucking shake the, shake the tree oh yeah doing the stylized i'm like wow well, no no wow, no not even man. that i'm going to show you something in a minute and maybe you'll have already seen this you're going to be like what the fuck first of all let's acknowledge how amazing it's been oh, to go God. from 1980 to 2024 and you just met you weigh those two levels of tattooing out my god the growth incredible you see like there's tattoos uh, you know and i've noticed that after the pandemic going back to conventions now i've got these younger tattooers that are older and they're just like man i love your work i i, I you know you were an inspiration i'm going it hasn't been that long i feel like i'm still new to the game but then i see their work and they're like hey well you critique my work and i look at them like fuck you tattoo so much better than i do i mean like, like it is yeah you see people now that. it's like it, it they've gotten so good and the artists the um you know, the pigments, the inks, the, uh, uh, the, the technology, you know, the machines. Right. Um, so it, you've hit this point where it's like, yeah, you know, how good can they get it? You know, and there's some tattoos that you see that are just unreal, but you're also like, well, that's the cool thing with tattooing is you also have to see what it's like five, six years down the road yeah. and how it ages, you know? So you're kind of like, yeah, but I, I do see at a point where it's going to kind of curve a little bit and then people are going to have to be creative, you know, right, if right. they want to be the cream of the crop or something, I guess, I guess that's the term, but you know, and I remember, I remember when I first started tattooing, um, my mentor at the time, you know, and, and it was totally understandable. He was just like, he was like, well, you got to know how to do a bit of everything. Cause otherwise you were, you're, you're, you're not going to be, you're, you're not going to be busy. And I remember him telling me that, and you know, you can't draw on a style, this, that, that. And I was thinking about it and I was like, well, from what I heard, tattooing is going to be on TV. It hadn't been yet. And I was thinking, I was like, once, once tattooing is on TV, it's going to be big. 
and then it's going to saturate the amount of tattooers out there. And then I was thinking, I was like, rather than knowing being half good at everything, you know, why not get really good at one thing? Yeah. And then that might give you a chance, you know, but then I also was thinking, I'm like, but I don't want to tattoo myself or I don't want to go put myself into a category or a corner where all I do is like portrait tattoos or something, you know, that's just an example. So then I was like, well, I'm going to play the luck of leverage. And I decided I was like, I already draw with a little bit of a style that most people see and I didn't really see. But I was like, instead of not drawing a style, I'm going to hone in on it, focus on it. Mm -hmm. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to somehow put a piece of me into if I want to draw something Japanese, you know, style, or if I want to do something in American traditional or all these different. So then that's all in your like, style. Yeah. Cause I figured if like, if I'm playing that law of leverage, I'm just kind of going, well, then I'll be ahead of the game. I've got my style and then no one's going to be able to catch up that easy. And then eventually if somebody sees that style, they have to come to me to get it, you know? And so it's kind of like, I, I thank God that I, I, I went with my gut on that one and I did because now it's, it's great because it's like somebody's like, hey, will you do a Japanese style dragon or whatever? I can do it. Now, the thing that, you know, I, I did fuck it up in the beginning and I just try to do everything stylized and tattoo it that way. And then and then you see how it ages. And then I really learned something. And I bet that was probably about you know five to ten years into tattooing. And then I really learned that I was like, I have to go back and learn the fundamentals of what a japanese style tattoo um, uh, is and and the elements of it and uh, american traditional because i realized i was like i can't be breaking these rules if i don't know the rules no, you know no. and there's a reason they have the rules because it works as a tattoo it looks yeah. good in the long run you know uh, it, it's interesting because i mean that's the road i went um i'm not saying any road is wrong or anything but um yeah, it's just I'm just curious to see what's going to happen to tattooing in the next 10 years. Adam Hawthorne, are you listening? Honky Kong, you out there? By the way, thank you for this yeah, beautiful love jumpsuit. Your work, man. Look at that. You got a fan sitting yeah. right here. Look at this nice suit you made me. You guys got to check this shit out. I'm going to have to invest in but, some jumpsuits. But he, he was that guy, right? This is, uh, God, I don't know. I'm going to guess 18 years ago, he comes. He's a young tattooer guru. And he's doing that. He's like, that's what I do. And I'm coming from... 10, 12 years before him. And I'm telling him, no, dude, you've got to be able to do everything. You can't just do these honky Kong things. Yeah. Man. And, you know, to be fair, he was hurting a little in business wise. And I kept telling him, then learn how to do everything. That's, that's a tattoo or a tattoo does everything. You got to do some lettering today. Yeah. You got to do a cross on this guy's ankle. And he stood his ground and said, no, I don't agree. Well, and, the one I do have to say, and I do, I'm sorry to interject no, yeah. uh, before, you know, anybody who's watching this goes, oh, I should just do my style. I still think if you're learning how to tattoo and you're getting into it, you still got to put in the hours and do your time. You got to do that lettering tattoos. You got to do all, you know, get, you know, get your beak wet. You know, don't, you know, I hate these guys getting in and being like, it's interrupting with my artistic like freedom. And mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, if you're starting to tattoo, put in the hours, then, you know, go that direction. But I apologize for interrupting. No, you, you, you're right. But that window of a little bit of everything can be pretty small nowadays oh yeah, yeah i mean heck i just apprenticed a young man who wants to do geometry straight mm -hmm. up he was painting this shit on buildings and murals it's oh. all the kids done and when i apprenticed him this is the first time i've done this i made him learn how to draw a few traditional tattoos and stuff and then i stopped and i you know a couple of my guys are like he should be drawing roses and this and that and i told him no i said yeah. i don't see the point and you know he's off and running, fully booked, six months out. Geometry. Just so many people love that style of work. I mean, he's not going to hurt. <laughs> you did. And it's a style of tattooing that's going to teach you all the fundamentals. Pull a straight line. You know how oh, yeah, do they? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think uh, you don't want to just jump right into tattooing and be a portraitist. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good luck with that move. But no, it, it, most it, respect to portrait tattooers. That's something I can't do. That's my. I still I'm, get people with. Uh, could you do a portrait for me? You looked at my work. Yeah. <laughs> Any type of hyper-realism fascinates me, and I don't even want to get near it because it's not my wheelhouse. But but it is. It's funny you did that because nowadays everybody's a genre tattooer. You are, you, you're going to be lost in the field if you're the guy that does a little bit of everything. Yeah. 
You really uh, are. I mean, it it, every single person that works in my shop, now we've got 20 tattooers here, every single guy has a genre. They dance a little side to side, but everyone's kind of got their thing, yep. you know? And I think that's where it ended up, and it should have. I mean, it's just like music. Imagine... Music starts catching on. Music hasn't really been a big deal. And you're telling some guy with a guitar, well, you need to learn jazz, classical, no, rock, <laughs> metal. It's just not how art works. It, it, art is its best when someone goes towards a specific angle of that art. And, and they got to love it. You know, I mean, that's, I mean, you know, that's one of the things, like, I, I know I said, like, your beginning, you still got to put in your time and do the tattoos that, you know, to learn the tattoo, but you got to know fundamentals. You yeah. still, and, and, you know, but you can learn fundamentals. It, it Fundamentals don't have to be taught just through traditional Americana. No, They teach it well. I mean, tradi traditional Japanese teaches it well too. Yeah. Let's just deal with three colors. Let's make every tattoo 30% black, 30% color, 30% skin. Yeah. You know, these are general rules of thumb that generally work and make good tattoos. There's always exceptions. But um, but those fundamentals can be learned in, and maybe you don't even have to learn how to draw a traditional rose. Maybe you could go straight towards like Adam Hawthorne did, where he 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 draws rose. They're not traditional roses. They yeah. have traditional fundamentals behind them. The oh, way yeah. he lines, not an overuse of too many colors, the way he uses his black shading, but it's not a, it's not a traditional rose. And he yeah. just stuck to his style of that his whole career thriving on of it i just think that's cool because i was taught the opposite you know and i wasted not wasted because it was it was the time it was and back when i was doing it if you couldn't tattoo everything you weren't eating because yeah. right? there was only so many customers every day and you had to do an indian kind of half-assed portrait on this guy do a cross on her ankle and do a traditional rose on that guy and maybe yeah. you made money so it was a survival technique i think those days are done now it's like you just learn to fundamentally tattoo well and then bring your authentic voice into you have art. to yeah, yeah you have to if you want to uh, if you want to stand out you yeah. know i mean it it's so saturated there's so many tattooers out there and and the thing about it is yeah and then people like you know now with social media if you if you're looking for a specific something you don't have to stick to your hometown you can go find it somewhere else you, you know, know? That, that's been a game changer and on that yeah. note I, you know we can go into like and I'll just say it out loud. One of the reasons tattooing went up that like this was because of Instagram, pe period. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know it, I know it. You get up in the morning, you open your phone, you see the 50 best tattoos that were done an hour ago, and they inform your decisions for your creative process that day. Mm -hmm. You're not copying it, but you're launching from that level up from that. Yeah. And it just shot. And that's goes. I, mean, I think it's great. I mean, like, if it wasn't like that, I don't know if I'd be as, you know, advanced with how I tattoo is, you know, if it was, if I didn't have that influence, you 100%. know, hundred percent, neither would I, yeah. neither would I, we used to drive around. I remember I took a road trip from San Diego to San Francisco with a friend yeah. of mine. We physically stopped at every, we had the yellow pages, we stole a yellow page out of a phone booth yeah. and we ripped out the tattoo section and we would read the address and we had maps and we pulled in. Why? So we could sneak in and pretend we weren't tattooers and ask to see their portfolios which were kept behind the counter. And even with, we had too many tattoos. So they were looking at us like, what do you want to see the portfolios? Well, we're, we're thinking about getting tattooed. Where yeah. are you from? I just want to look. I'm you know. we're from, uh, we're from Vegas. What are you doing in Long Beach? They were like basic. Yeah. Maybe they'd be like, all right, kid here, take a look. And you were just yeah. trying to, you couldn't photograph it. You were just memorizing. That's I, fucking dope. I That's remember dope. that. Remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then, then you go home and try to draw what you saw, you yeah, know? I, yeah. When I started tattooing, yeah, it was just like, if, if the guy came around that was selling flash, it was like, and you could totally tell that they were all photocopied or whatever, but it was like, I'll buy everything. You know, we just buy as much as anything. Cause, Cause that was your Instagram. Yeah, I had my, yeah, I had my stack of magazines that I cherished, you know, and, and, uh, yeah, you didn't have much. So books, whatever, because you didn't, you know, when I started, we didn't have internet at the shop or anything. And it wasn't like you could do that. Nowadays, it's click. Let's jump ahead. I want to see how you react to this. This blew my mind the other day. So I'm tattooing oh. uh, a client of mine. He is the head. I'm going to get his title wrong. He's the head of all the um, graphic designers, illustrative designers for Adobe. Matt. Okay. He's a, he's a art director. 
but very top tier. Been doing it as most of his life. Yeah. And he's obviously enveloped into the uh, digital art world. And he's talking about AI apps. And I got one and I plugged my face into it and shot at a bunch of versions. It's funny. <laughs> but then he's like, no, it's a little more than that. And uh, he, he goes, he goes, give me an idea. Give me two ideas that few and we fuse them together. And I go, okay, uh, how about Buddha and HR Geiger? He oh, wow. types this into this, and by the way, other AI apps, I've never seen him do it this well. He types this into his phone in under one minute, under 60 seconds. I say Buddha and uh, and Geiger. It spits- There's 60 seconds. 60 seconds, it spits that out. Oh, wow. Flip it to the other way. See the second version, or maybe the other way. Wow. I don't know how well everyone can see that. 60 seconds, okay? Now, I don't draw in this style, but I have artists that do. And I know for a fact, if somebody asked for that, I want an HR Geiger Buddha. I know there's a guy in a room for two days creating this piece of art. Oh, yeah. And it may not even be that dope. So I don't know what to say because I'm still processing this, but I'm kind of, and not not in a stressed out way. I'm good where I'm at and I'm, I'll am i probably be fine. I think yeah. we all will actually be fine. Nothing's wrong here. I'm just more fascinated at... When you talk about the change, because we were talking about what tattooing's done, what might come next. When I see that, I'm like, huh, that that's just getting started. I, in some sense, I think it's going to really weed out the competition in tattooing. Because, you know, how many people are just going to stop drawing and they can just do that and, and just trace it? I don't know. I mean, you know, I, 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 <laughs> it's, it's crazy how good it is, you know. But then on another note, I'm like... Yeah, I like the soul of actually drawing, you know, or whatever. But just to be fair, too, that's a totally unique piece. God, if you crazy. enter that again and hit go, it gives you two different ones. See, I heard they can do it where they're taking styles so they can take specific artists and find out, like, and and the computer will uh, fixate on certain elements of that person's style yeah. and be able to recreate I'll guarantee it. you they could probably already do this. If not, it's happening soon. I could put in, I want a Dave Koenig sleeve. I want it to have a girl and a ship. Hit go, it's going to go and pump out a sick piece that looks just like your shit. You know, I, I'll get tagged by other people when somebody Bites copies you. my stuff or, or draws, you know. Um, and I've seen a couple things that I'm like, yeah, that's remarkably close to how I would draw it. So, <laughs> I don't, maybe it is. You know, I don't know. That would be crazy. So. And I'm with you on the soul part, but mm -hmm. I'm just going to be fair. People out there. No offense to those people, but a lot of them are just concerned with the end result. They, oh, yeah. And they yeah. don't really give a shit that a computer made it. They don't. Because I've had people say, nobody's going to want that. And I'm like, eh, I don't agree. I, yeah. I don't want that. I really don't. I want someone to draw it. I want to know that person. I, that whole yeah. experience is so raw and authentic to me. I love that. It's, but I'm an old guy. These uh, 19, 18 year olds that are on their phones all day playing video games. Everything comes to you so quick on a phone. Why it's going to get the design. Now you don't have to sit and wait for someone or pay somebody to draw it. You know, well, you can just be like, here, I want this tattoo. Then you go to draw something for somebody. They're already, they've already punched in the idea they've given you for their oh. tattoo design into AI. So when you send them your drawing, they're getting your drawing and, and comparing it to an AI output. And then they're giving you notes like, could you change this and change that? It's not even coming from them. They're looking at a picture AI. I built, they don't have the balls to tell you they're doing it. Right. And now, so that, and my client the other day, I go, finally it clicked. I'm like, Hey, wait a second. I was doing a crane from his shoulder to his wrist, which is a crane with flowers. I yeah. go, did you pump that into the AI app before I drew it? Yeah. And he, he kind of got embarrassed and he's really? like, I did. And I was like, you show me, show me what AI, what, the, what would it, what do, it do, give you? How close was it to how you would draw it? It was totally different. Yeah. It was, you know, all of it looks, still looks a little digitally yeah. like a, like a video game guy drew it, but they were dope. It was like these cranes with surrealistic leaves for tail feathers. And yeah. they were beautiful. Like I actually looked at those drawings and I was like, huh, I could have probably used that as influence for my artwork and use some of those tech. Now, was it drawn to fit his arm? No. And that's a different thing. Composition. Yeah. The AI, I don't think has been educated to the point where it, but it could. I mean, if it can do that, I'm sure they could have a, a body template they could throw into an AI for tattooers. And then you can go, this particular, I'm going to put input for this, and this is supposed to be a sleeve. And then it not only spits you out the artwork, but it spits it out to it's fit the composition. And, and not and just uh, anybody, the body of the picture person. of the person that you sent. That's the next step.
That's the next step to that curve. I, I hate saying it out loud, man, because it's so, it scares me. It offends me. It excites me. I'm, it's rare to have something that gives me all the emotions at once. Well, I feel like, <laughs> I, you know, and it sucks, you know, I, stuff like that you want to be angry about and you want to be like, uh, you know, but another part of me is like, bring it. You're going to have people now that will be taking our styles and having the computer or the AI recreate an image and then they can go to any tattoo or they want to get it tattooed, you yeah. know, and it's like, all right. But I feel like in this world, you know, and this could push us over to the NFT thing because I feel like in this world, everybody, you know, because there's so much accessibility to everything that now people wanting a one of a kind thing is so much more rare, you mm -hmm. know? And so I think that's why like, People are like, you know, trying to create originals and, you know, um, uh, digital originals that they can buy and brag about and have mm. the original, you know, but uh, yeah, I mean, like, I'm hoping, I'm hoping people will still want me to draw things. <laughs> I like drawing. I think you're far enough down the line. You'll, I think we're both going to be fine. I think we'll be safe. But I mean, I cannot speak for the guy that's starting tattooing oh, today, no. who's extremely a a talented at illustration, who's got a style that I'm like, that is crazy unique, That the thing you've developed. Yeah. I look at that guy, you've got 30 years ahead of you. This shit just got going and, and, and things are getting better by the month, not the year. So, and how long does it take before so many people, you're so hot and on fire with your unique illustrations that people love it so much that the guy in Australia, he's not going to fly to San Diego to have it oh. tattooed, but he loves your shit. Boom, pumps it into AI. Another guy does it in London. Pretty soon, thousands of people have done it. And then before you know it, people can't even remember who the creator was. They're, you're oh, sitting they in the background. Out and you're like, okay, well. <laughs> you're in the background like, uh, hey, everybody, I invented that. Yeah. And they're like, huh? Anyways. I mean, uh, yes, in the end, we still need technicians. Like, can you put ink in skin? Yeah. But, but really, I don't think that's the thing that separates you or me. What separates us, technicians can be made a lot easier than the guy that can actually. What separates you is the, is the style you draw in that I don't know anyone else who draws like you. Sure. If I want a tattoo that looks like your shit, I know I have to go to you, period. Thank At you. least today. I didn't plug you into the app. I mean, I, <laughs> you luckily, lucky you're here. I'm interested. I was going to plug you in and have one of the other guys do it, but you were here, so I'll have you oh, do okay. it. Oh, okay, yeah, it works. <laughs> I don't know. I wanted to bring that up because it's just something that's on my mind. After I saw that, I'm like, I got to talk to other tattooers, especially older tattooers like us, that I want to know. I couldn't wait to hear your... I could tell it stupefied you a little. It's it does. <laughs> you know, like, it's just crazy. It's crazy how quick it can produce it and everything like that. Under I know a minute. this is going to happen, you know? You know what's going to happen. But it's just... It makes me curious on what, it, you know, what a ta what tattooing is going to be like in, yeah, 20 years from now. I, but the whole reason I got into tattooing was because I love to draw, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I enjoy doing that. But, uh, yeah, I don't... I have... I have no clue what it's going to be like for those yeah. guys. There'll probably be two groups. There'll be the group don't care. And there'll be these like enthusiasts that are like, now when you look at a guy's arm, you're like, well, was it hand drawn or AI? And there'll be these groups that are like, oh, AI. Yeah. Not my shit. This is all uh, drawn by a human being. Which you know? then, yeah, then it will make people be like, okay, we got to draw on paper again, just <laughs> yeah. to have proof that it was actually burn our sketched. iPads and yeah. <laughs> get back to the pencils and paper. Damn iPads. Uh, yeah, you know, they made it life so easy, that, you know, because like, I, I was like, I'm not an iPad. I'm the one we use it. I figured but, uh, you'd say that after but, I heard your coil story. Yeah, well, then you know, we we when we got when my wife, my wonderful wife, got pregnant, she, uh, I was just like, okay, all right, maybe I should do the iPad because I'll have a little baby. And, <laughs> Yeah, you know, and and it did it, it came out handy. So I got it, you know, six years ago. Don't Still try to blame one. this on your family. You well, love no, it. No, yeah. And then well, and then I got it and I was like, I, I'd still sketch and sometimes I do, I'll still sketch on paper and then take a picture and then refine it right. on the iPad. Or I'll go vice versa. I'll I'll uh, sketch on the iPad and then I like it so much for a painting, I might have it printed to the size but super light and then refine the whole right, thing right. in hand. I've done that. Um but uh uh yeah then i i got it i was like well i'll, I'll use it to you know out our hardline tattoos and whatever but i'm never doing a fully rendered piece and 
than than when you got a toddler running around as you're trying to paint. I mean, I think I actually have a picture of me working painting a giant bear back piece and I'm holding my boy when he was a baby and those throw up falling out of his mouth onto the painting, <laughs> you know, and, and, uh, you know, it's awesome. It's awesome to have that, but it was like, yeah, it, it hit a point where it's like, God, just set up all the paints and do this and do that. It, it just got too hard. So then you're like, well, I can just sit on an iPad and sit and watch a show with my wife, you yeah. know, and not, you know, ignore her by going downstairs and painting the whole time or whatever. Yep. So the reason I brought this up was because we're talking about like, the AI and you can kind of tell when a drawing like lacks that soul. Mm -hmm. And I noticed with iPads, it's made it far too accessible and easy for people to trace. Oh yeah. So, and, and it amazes me because some of these guys, they'll just sit there. Some of these guys and girls will sit there and they piece together things and trace them to Google, create a tattoo. Yeah. But, uh, and then they look very stiff and it's like in the time it took you to piece it together, you could have just drawn the fucking thing. Well, they you probably know? can't draw some yeah. of them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you'll, some get, of them. you'll get better if you have to draw, you right, know, right. but yeah, no, it, it's interesting. Yeah. And, and, and don't get me wrong. I've been guilty of, you know, like, Oh, well, I'll just trace this. I'll bring this rose and trace it. And then, but then I'm like sitting there tracing it, trying to work on it. And then I'm like. I should have just drew it. It took me long enough yeah. to do this, you know, so. I actually use reference a lot harder than I think you do. Mm -hmm. But I'm very, um, you know, when I come to my human form, if I got to do a woman arching her neck and reaching into the sky, gosh, you know, my stuff is a little more towards realism um, than yours. So I will photograph my wife in the olden days, you know, and I'll, but then I trace and manipulate and change and, mm -hmm. and i just keep twisting and twisting and twisting and then my voice enters more and more and more and more and eventually it reaches to this place where they're like oh that's aaron delavadova piece thank yeah. you but so i'm not ever going to judge the guy that but you're right See, there's a fine line there and, and hey each guy or girl out there tattooing you make your choice i'm not here to judge your yeah, your process yeah, yeah. if there's people lined up to get tattooed by you and they seem to love it and those people are happy you yeah. have my blessing and in the iPad, if you're really drawing on the damn thing, it's 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 kind of not a difference ish. If you're not leaning on tools and you know they have these tools where it draws the snake for you, and I, I don't use any of that. Yeah, I just I, I use the pencil like a like a pencil on, mm -hmm. the, but it's on an iPad. You know, so it's erasing it's, and sitting there erasing something. Now I'm like. Gone, yeah. The worst is when you're actually drawing on paper and you do that. You feel you so double stupid. tap paper. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like you fucking. Get me. I've done that. Like, I've done that. Right on, man. Well, no, this has I, been fun, and and you know, I could, I could, we could probably go on for hours about what we do and where we've been in this craft together and our journeys, but we don't have all that time today. So, I've been tattooing people on the show, as some of you have seen, but today I'm, I'm honored to have i've been wanting a tattoo by you since the day i met you well, thank you and i didn't know how and when it would happen but hey what better place or time so dave's gonna tattoo me today um not only am i nervous to tattoo aaron but then i'm doing it on this too so it's like oh, i'm a little shaky dude, but dude, we'll be good let me show you something on my ankle this will ease you up okay that's the last tattoo i got so <laughs> no, just relax that's fucking awesome. <laughs> you're gonna be fine <laughs> <laughs> well thank you my french jellyfish as i call it <laughs> um but yes i'm gonna tattoo by you so i'm stoked because i'm actually when's the last time well i got that but that was me and my son having fun in the Mount, montana mountains but That's awesome. um when's the last time i got seriously tattooed i know geez when, when uh oh i got this watch on my hand that's what it was but that's probably been under a year, but it's been a minute. Yeah. So uh, it's always fun to get a new tattoo. I'm pretty covered like you, and there's not a lot of spots left. I kind of purposely left this right leg. I was about to have Fibs do it. Yeah. I and I was so stoked, you know, could love his work. And then I thought, started thinking like, this is it. This is your last chunk. And then I started the show and I'm like, dude, you're going to have some of your favorite tattooers on the show. Take and advantage I, of it. Yeah, and I'm like, I want a piece by every single one of them. That means more to me than a composed piece. Yeah. So you're the first of that collection. Dude, thank this you. this leg it's will an honor, be man. covered thank you so much. by my favorite dudes, and you're number one. And on that note, I'm like you, a Midwestern boy. I'm from Iowa. I grew up in the cornfields of Iowa. You know, my oh, my old man was a contractor. My grandpa was a contractor. And what we do on the weekends, we hunt pheasant and quail and deer and I'll never forget following my grandpa through the cornfields as he plucks pheasant out of the sky and then walks up and grabs them by their head and twists their heads off and drops them behind them. Doesn't even look at me, you know, and I'm picking up these little pheasant heads, blood dripping like, out oh of them. Oh, my God. 
just at first you're scared, but then you get into it. You're like, I'm playing with the feathers. And really, it's kind of the beginning of art. It's like, yeah. look at the beauty of this bird, you know? And uh, and, and, so, and, and, and people in the background, some of you might see behind Dave, that's me and my grandpa right there with some pheasants in our oh, hands. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So you know, an ode to my grandfather and my father in that lifestyle in the Midwest, uh, I, I asked Dave today to create me a, a severed, pheasant head you drew three i don't know which one we're gonna do we're gonna take a look that. i'm thinking about putting it on my foot okay it got from like ankle onto foot so we're, we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up and uh we're gonna meet you guys on the other side of the room and uh old dave my buddy here is gonna rip a severed pheasant head on my foot it's gonna be an honor thank you so much Let's i appreciate you my friend yeah we'll be back here after we're done we'll talk about how this all goes <laughs> I think it's awesome that I'm not only getting a pheasant head, but I'm getting it from a Midwestern boy. That That's cool. You know, if you were just some SoCal kid, God, that doesn't work. He'd be like, what? what is this again? It's a what? I'm like, it's a pheasant, man. You never had pheasant and quail dinner? I know you have, Dave. Yeah, pheasants are meant to be eaten. Yes. I'm stoked. I, I'm, I couldn't be more happy. I mean, look at it. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Um, Dave, thank you. Thank you. you. Dude, it's, it's, I'm going to say you did the tattoo. I get to say thank you. Um, for real, I, I, I've said it before, a huge fan of your work, have been for many, many years. To, to have this experience together on the show is its own beautiful thing. But to have this tattoo to remember it by, is it's super special. As you, you know, and having a lot of tattoos, what I, I find really rad about them, one of the things, you look at a tattoo and everything that happened that day is in focus. Oh, yeah. You know, you remember every little bit, yes. Even more than a photo can do. There's something about the experience of maybe it's the pain or it just it embeds and your memory can never forget it. There's not a single tattoo on my body. I couldn't tell you where I was, who did it. And, and unfortunately some of them weren't the coolest folks. Most were luckily, but that's a, that's one of those things like be careful who you get tattooed by. Cause you're going to, every time you look at it, you're going to remember that You'll experience. Remember that person. Yeah. Yeah. So for this one, I guess I'm highlighting the fact that this is, I'm going to be looking down at that foot and I'm going to smile oh, and I'm going to think friend. of that beautiful mustache. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounded a little, my, what is it? The cookie duster? <laughs> Cookie duster, I like that one. Um, but um, no, I mean, as far as the tattoo goes, I know a lot of people are always curious about how did it go, how did it feel. That was kind of like my ankle bone, and you know where the foot, ankle twist, that that turn right there, and of course the foot. It wasn't that bad. It was uh, it was spicy, but it wasn't something I would, you know, say like that was that was a big deal. It was it was, it was medium, I'd say. Yeah, not it's, too bad. No, it was okay. probably because you and your gentle hand. I have a gentle and, hand. Yeah, I everyone could... says I have a heavy hand, but I think that no, it's anybody, different these days. You heard it from the best. No way, gentle That's hand. Right. That's I'm gonna right. give you a new nickname. Thank you. <laughs> It's well, funny because to when of... I was in France, they used to call me Le Bouge, you know, and I was like, "What is that?" They're like the butcher. <laughs> but I think it was my old machines. I was like, you know, nowadays, yeah, I'm soft. The butcher. I think I'm getting soft in my old age. Yeah, we we all do. That's uh, the universe built that into the algorithm so that at some point we'd start being kinder. You know, yeah. <laughs> the, you, you see that. Although I take the that older back. and weaker we become, we become nicer. Yeah, so we're less some... likely to get. You chewed away. Get our asses kicked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, buddy, it's been an honor and a pleasure. Um, and uh, I just want to say thanks again. And, you know, maybe we'll do it again down the road. But, hey, friends, tattoo friends for life. High five. The honor is mine. Thank All you, right. my friend.
Well, I everybody, you. Thank there you. you have it, Dave Koenig. By the way, I should add, let me do this before we exit. Tell people where they can find you. Uh, you can find me uh, at dkoenigart.com. I'm also on Instagram as Dave Koenig, K-O-E-N-I-G art. Um, uh, I do have a YouTube channel. Um, uh, otherwise, you can find me at Tent Sanctum Tattoos in Omaha, Nebraska. Cool. So. And we'll have all those links in the show notes so you guys can check it out. And by the way, again, he's not just a tattoo artist. He's a hell of a painter, oh, sells beautiful art prints. I own a bunch of them. They're bitching. So check him out and give him some love. All right, everybody. Thanks again. We'll see you again Thank soon. You. Cheers. 